You mentioned penny stocks. It was that that led you down the wrong path, wasn't it? Yes. That stuff early on. And it ended up with you losing your liberty. What was the worst moment for you when it all went wrong? When you look back, what was the moment you would least want to relive? When I was asked to wear a wire, and I did, and it was a friend, and I... You've seen me see in the film. And I slipped him a note because I didn't want to rap. I, yeah. I thought I was being a stand-up guy. Yeah, so that's in the movie. Right, it's true. And I thought I was doing the right thing as, you know, a man, and I slipped the guy a note saying, don't incriminate yourself, mm. right? And I walked away from that saying, you know what, I maintain my integrity because I'm not a rat. And then three months later, they came back to me and the guy ratted me out. And at that moment in time, like, literally, I lost all faith in humanity. Mm. And I was facing... 20 years in jail, they could have broken my agreement. If it was not for the FBI agent who indicted me, he was a great guy, he understood and, like, they gave me a second chance because that could have destroyed my life. That was the low point for sure. That moment when I, you, know, you think, like, I'm not a rat, and then you... It's, so that's the Jonah Hill character. But that's not true. It wasn't... The, but in, in reality, it was not the Jonah right. Hill character. It was, they collapsed, like, three or four people into that character, right? It was someone else. Did I, you ever have anything more to do with the one that ratted you out? You know, I saw him a few times, but no relation. Any forgiveness? They, yeah, of course I forgive. I don't, I'm not one to hold grudges, and I forgive, you know, and, uh, you know, you don't forget, but you certainly can But that forgive. was worse for you than actually going to prison? Far worse than prison itself was waiting to go to prison. The thought of it? Just the uncertainty in your life. You're almost dying in slow motion. You know, once you go to prison, you know, it becomes almost a rebirth if you're willing to take that failure, that life failure, and use it as a lesson to reinvent yourself, and, and that's what I did. I mean, you have a lot of time in prison to think about stuff. There's nothing else to do for most of the day, right? Yeah, so I did really two things. I, number one is I, I, I thought about stuff a lot, for mm. sure, but I also taught myself to write. Mm. And I used that time to perfect my writing skills. Well, not perfect, but just, you know, really become a, a competent writer. And that led me to write The Wolf of Wall Street, mm. which then launched this entirely new career. So I think the matter, you know, the lesson for anyone listening is that, you know, everyone f up. Everyone makes mistakes. Sure. Some people make much bigger mistakes than others, right? Would you change anything? No. I mean, when you look at where you've got to now... No, I wouldn't. The I would... whole path, yeah. up and down, and then back up, would you change it? I wouldn't, but that... that so, let me... It's a complicated question. So, the answer is no, because it's not possible. Of course, if I could not have done anything to hurt another person, of course I wish I never did that. Of course I feel terrible about all that stuff, and I'm very remorseful for that, OK? And, I, and, and I've spent so many years making up for that in countless ways. But I wouldn't change anything, because that was my life and it happened, mm. and I've used that as sort of like to create this life I have now. So if I could cherry-pick it and say, you know, I hope no one ever lost money as my... Of course I do that. I'm not crazy, right? But you can't do that. Mm. You know, you have to look back at your life and say, you know what, this is what I did, I made mistakes, I learned from those mistakes, and now I keep becoming a better version of myself. That's my goal, is to become a better version of myself every day. Are you completely squeaky clean now? Squeaky, you mean sober, clean, or clean with the law? Anyway. Squeak, I'm the cleanest person that you'll ever meet. You know why? <laughs> because I, I would have to be. In other words, you know, you realize that I'm going to be scrutinized more than anybody. And in fact, I was. For many years, the government thought I was not paying my fine that I had. They thought I was hiding money. They looked at my asshole with a freaking microscope, right? And you know what they found after five years? Zero. Mm. So, like Warren Buffett says, you, think you could follow anybody. If a cop follows you for 300 miles, they'll give you a speeding ticket. They couldn't give me one, and they followed me for, for hundreds of miles. Before you went into prison, you obviously had beautiful yachts and private planes and all that kind of thing. Which of those things do you still have? Well, I have beautiful... I, I fly private often, right? On your own plane? I, no, I, I charter a yeah. plane, which is getting prohibitively expensive, by the way, <laughs> which is terrible. You know, that's what I love. The Trump come back and lower prices for gas would be a really good thing. We'll come to him. Yeah, um, I'm a fan, you know, not of all things, but generally speaking, big fan. Right? Um, um, I would never buy a yacht again. I was so happy when the one I had sank. It was like the great... I was so happy. Like, I didn't plan it out, but when it was sick, I was like, yes, Lloyd's of London, you know? <laughs> right? I and, worked at Lloyd's. Right? And, my uh, first year of my working yeah. career, I and, had to help a mate out. I worked as, on one of the underwriting syndicates. Yeah. So I would have been one of those guys 
paying you all that money for your yacht. As there you go, down. right? I got a check for like $9 million a day. It said a few days later, they showed up. They're like, usually we investigate these things, but you know what? No one will be stupid enough to go on the boat themselves into a storm. They, mm. you just, just Here's a check and don't ever ask us to insure you again, basically. And they pay <laughs> me right away, right? So Lloyd's was pretty good to so me. So no boat, but you, you, you charter private Charter plane. private. I Listen, I'm very... Nice very, car? Very, yeah, but I, I do. What do you drive? A Mercedes. Mercedes, and my wife has got an Aston Martin. Which one? Uh, she's I, got the I've... truck, the DBX. Ah. And I have the uh, AMG, the, the, the GT Turbo, whatever it is, AMG, right? But, I'm an Aston Martin but, guy. But, but cars, it's interesting. When I was in my 20s and 30s, I just loved cars. Mm. I just, it meant everything to me. What car I drive. I, I honestly never even... Now you're drive. on comfort. I never drive, even. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll go, go take a, a, an Uber or something, you know, just it's easier, drive. Yeah. It's so much easier, and I can just relax in the back seat. So, you know, all the, a lot of the urges I had of how I define myself as a man, so to speak, very different than the way I do today. Do you ever get urges to just go and take loads of quaaludes and behave disgracefully? Well, yeah, but quaaludes, yeah, not cocaine, but mm. quaaludes were amazing. Thankfully, they're illegal, and you can't find them anywhere. Mm. Like, thank God, because they're too good, you know? But if you have one, you know, we can go after, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do not, just for the record, I do not have any quaaludes. That's the it. one drug, you know, like, I, and uh, people say, listen, I'm just kidding, a little, but a little bit. Mm. But they, they were amazing. You're not kidding. Yes, thank sorry. God that you can't find them. They were just so great that, you know, very difficult to resist. So your desires can't be quenched. Oh, you know, again, probably you uh, yeah, you know, listen, I, I drink a little bit here and there, yeah. don't use drugs. Uh, the things that make sense in your 20s and 30s don't make sense, you know, it gets a bit more when, difficult to recover. When you didn't have your liberty, what was the thing you missed most about liberty? Freedom. Freedom. Just being literally being able to... Was it, were there specific things that when you, not, not... When, you, when you came out, what were the things you most wanted to do again? First thing I did was I ate a cheeseburger. Mm. Missed cheeseburgers desperately, right? But I mean, you know, it, it, it's very, when you're in jail, and I was not in a terrible jail. Oh. It wasn't like I had to worry about, you know, going into the shower and getting in the shower. It wasn't like that, okay? It was, it was a, a minimum security. But jail's jail. You know, you have no freedom. You can't do what you want to do. Oh. And there's something about that that can be very suffocating. Now, the way I got around that was just engrossing myself and learning how to write. Mm. And that passed the time very quickly. And I worked out a lot, got kept in shape. But other than that, just the entire... This, this, it's, it's hard to explain because, you know, just something about not having freedom, mm. not being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it, um, is, 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 is suffocating. And it can be very... For most people... It, it can break them. You know, for me, I was able to turn that into energy to write and, and ended up really reinventing an entirely new life.